when I first came to Hawaii, well, I came in with the expectations that I'd seen in photographs, and so I was kind of expecting the photographs to be a little overzealous, but when I came here, it was exactly as I had pictured. Everybody's just so friendly, everybody's just so open, and it really doesn't matter like where you're from or like what color you are. You can just feel the energy here. It's really different here. We can all get together and share food, and share culture, share knowledge, and just come together as one. The National Science Foundation funds this program. There are dozens of them across the country. The main purpose of it is to increase the participation in the STEM workforce, particularly for underrepresented groups. So it's our job to try to find a, a broad swath of students that are representative of a good mix and, and give them an opportunity to come here and get a little sampling of what graduate school is about. We give them nine weeks of uh, working with individual faculty mentors uh, studying a particular aspect of the Earth Ocean Sciences and they get to conduct a, a small a research project uh, during that time. One of the things in my education that I don't quite have right now is long-term research and sort of figuring that out in preparation for grad school. So I think one of the main reasons I wanted to come here was to sort of figure out like whether I like doing research, what kind of research I like doing. And so this program is a great opportunity to like kind of get my foot in the door with doing research and making connections far away from home in places that could really give me an opportunity to keep doing what I want to do. So, so typically the, this program here is very exciting to us because we, we're in Hawaii so there's all these natural laboratories that we can visit. So the students will have a chance to go to the Big Island and see actual volcanism and uh, see the many beautiful mountains we have on the Big Island and when they were formed and look at some of the geology of them. I brought you to this spot because you can, it gives you a good view of the packages, but there's another whole batch of xenoliths that are up at the summit of Hualalai, and they're different, they're white. I think overall Big Island was a really fun experience and it was also really cool to see geology and features that I had never seen before. And I think the ability to go to the Big Island the first weekend really cemented everyone in the group and we all really got to know one another really well. These kinds of friendship that form in an REU are like friendships that last a lifetime so I hope that happens to us too. So we, we flew into the western half, got to walk around on a bunch of different volcanoes, all five different volcanoes actually. We were able to pretty much circumnavigate the whole island, which was really cool. We would drive for say like a half hour and be in an entirely new environment. We went from just pahoehoe lava flows to nearly rainforest type climate in a day. It turned out to be just a great trip. We got to see so much of the island. There's just so many things that we can really learn from Kilauea. And so I think that that's one of the most exciting things about coming here is kind of having such a close, close access to that and a relationship with the big island. And then also since we've got the chain of islands, just kind of showing the changes that have been occurring through the years. And so I think that, that those kind of connections just really make Hawaii an exciting place to come study geology. You're just gonna see me because I can't I'm just gonna make all of it. I'm assuming we're all hungry enough that we Might be a good time if I can have your attention. <laughs> I was just uh, it's been a, it's been a really good day and I think we had we all had fun in the sun and got some exercise and got to see some fabulous volcanology. Um, and, and I wanted to share with you an observation that was made on, on our trip, our foray out for cash. <laughs> the observation was about 1170 degrees and casting an illumination over the trees at about eight kilometers distance. And an offer, do you wanna go see yes. the fountain? Yes. All right, <laughs> we can do it tonight. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna go to the spot where we saw it, which is, as far as we know, the only spot on the road that's, you know, that's possible.
Celia Smith has uh, really tried to share some Hawaiian culture with me and she's really explained how the natives here made it one of their priorities to really give back to the land and kind of learn all that they could about the natural environment around them and use that to provide for them and give back and things like that and I think that as scientists that's really what we should be aspiring to. It's interesting coming from here being Hawaiian. It's definitely a balance of trying to understand yourself better, understanding the system better, the field better. Because like I have a lot of different interests and they don't strictly uh, lie just in the STEM field. They lie in the connection between how science intersects with people. It hasn't been easy, but this generation is increasingly accepting of these two different ideas of STEM and culture. It's not two different things. They can be one. So um, this is the electron microprobe and I've been using it, I used it for about four days now in total. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at olivine crystals in my sample, which um, in either thin sections or ones I've mounted. So right now this is a, a vacuum chamber. The sample is in here and you take it in and out through this little chamber. It runs by itself for four hours. So this is a secondary electron image, but it basically is like the, how the crystal looks. So I'm excited to look at crystals from uh, eruptions uh, just on the big island because it's really applicable right now since there's an eruption going on and I hope to kind of use my information to help us understand how volcanoes erupt and hopefully um, have us project them better in the future. I, I consider myself pretty lucky because my project actually involves field work which I know some people in the group are doing a lot more lab work than I am, but I'm pretty fortunate to be able to get outside, go to neat places like the harbor or fish ponds or um, down to the ocean and take actual environmental data. Um, so what we're doing is comparing this homemade light sensor um, with a commercial grade, really expensive light sensor and then it'll drop it down slowly through the water column and then bring it back up again. I'm trying to basically see what it takes to um, take a $9 light sensor and make it run as well as the $1,000 uh, commercial grade light sensor here. So this has been the wonderful opportunity to merge some of my backgrounds into one program. So while I'm here, I'm actually working in a botany lab. So uh, kind of doing biology through a geological lens, which is exactly what I was looking for. I'll be collecting algae from Kaneohe Bay and uh, all kinds of native and invasive species. Everyone here is very supportive of all that you want to do and they kind of cater your summer plan to what you want to get out of it. We also have the luxury of taking them out on an o a real oceanography expedition. So for three days the students will be sampling data and living, living on a ship basically for three days and uh, collect data and see how it, life at sea is if you're an oceanographer. As the captain said, safety is first and foremost for a number of you folks. This is your very first trip offshore, as I understand. Um, this is a different world out here. We're a long ways from the nearest hardware store. We're a long ways from the nearest hospital. Uh, we're gonna be doing dredging, which is one of the most dangerous operations we do on board. Uh, we're taking a, a very large chunk of metal with lots of chain and very heavy cables and trying to hook a planet with it. Uh, dredging again is going to take probably five people back there and I need to find out. We'll need to coordinate who your most skilled people are. And we can cycle other folks in for different operations, uh, magnetometer and other things. Uh, those folks who want to get, get their hands involved, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to do that.
trying to break off the surface huh. that um, was kind of exposed up to the ocean. Because supposedly that's where like, they'll find the crystals if they need. With two weeks left, um, I haven't started my report, haven't started my poster, um, and in those two weeks we have to make our poster, edit our poster, proof our poster, showcase our posters to the rest of our group, get feedback, re-edit our posters, and then we have a poster symposium at the end of next week. And alongside all of that we have to be working on our final paper. I, for one, have not come close to finishing. I still have like a lot of things to accomplish before I can actually sit down and write. I have a lot of things with not a lot of time, so it'll be an interesting like two weeks for sure. I feel like this is a lot. This, this would be a really good first column here to kind of do your intro and background. And since you have a lot of stuff here, you would just have to pick and choose what's the most important things that you want to mention. And I'm waiting for a day. And they're already at five hours, so pretty close. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. A huge thank you to all of our student presenters. You're the real reason why we're here. Um, congratulations on the summer well spent on the Manoa campus. We look forward to hearing about your presentations today, as well as all the successes that you're going to have in future years. <laughs> So I was doing um, a little bit of instrumentation development over the summer. This has been the effort of uh, Dr. Glazer's lab. Um, and these are the profiles of the olivine grains we analyzed. These regions are definitely experiencing some significant nutrient loading. Uh -huh. So I had always imagined research being a very like cut dry, just work nine to five all day in the lab, but it's very much sort of uh, exercise and balancing time and managing other work with research. I thought that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sort of learning what grad school would be like was really powerful and really helpful. I think nine weeks ago, I couldn't even imagine kind of like where I would be at now or what I would have learned or, you know, all these thoughts of just like the amount that I would learn and after doing it, just seeing the, how much more I actually have has been really cool. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really grateful for this experience and um, I'm feeling really just kind of like, I don't think it's really hit me yet that I'm about to be leaving Hawaii in a few hours. So it's pretty crazy. It's done. <laughs> so uh, I think we had a great program this summer. I'm very happy with how it worked out. I only heard good things back. Thanks, everybody, for making this a uh, great year. Uh, enjoy the cake. There's a little bit left of whatever drinks is there. and. Uh, Good trip home. I'll be taking you to the airport tomorrow, so we'll, we'll chat some more about it. <laughs> have, you. have a safe flight. Thanks. Yeah. It's great having you guys here. It was fun. Yeah, it was I'm going to miss probably living next to a beach with consistent surf. Been living in luxury and I haven't really noticed it now until I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. We're leaving tomorrow, that's really sad. I've forged some great relationships with the people here and my mentors, and I will miss them dearly, and hopefully we can stay in contact, but uh, I'm not ready to leave. <laughs> it's been a wonderful time here. I feel like a proud father, even though I didn't really do anything. I'm gonna miss everybody. We all like got along really quickly, um, which I think is so rare but so um, important with something like this. And yeah, I could definitely see uh, me visiting a few people um, after the program. From day one, it was like, this is, this is family. You know, I didn't expect to be, you know, met with such, you know, open arms and such compassion. And 
It's kind of crazy how we all come from all over and it just doesn't matter. You know, everybody just accepts everybody for who they are. It's really beautiful to, to kind of be a part of this. I think my biggest tip for a uh, student looking to get into really any REU would be to find something that you're passionate about. Uh, I think that from the mentor perspective, when they're looking for students, that's something that really stands out and they want someone who's very excited about what they're doing. It's okay to not know everything. I learned a lot more about myself and I learned a lot more about my abilities being placed in something that I had minimal experience in, almost no experience in. I think the most valuable thing this program has taught me is to network and to seek, to actively seek out grad students to talk to and to engage with. And I know that this program is gonna stick with me and the rest of the students here for the rest of our lives. And this is gonna be such just a powerful experience for us, both academically, personally, emotionally, and just so many ways. I hope as many people as possible can have an experience like this. Uh, NSF funds many, many of these in all uh, areas of science and uh, students just need to apply, that's all it takes.